everyone that's following us on our social media page and is going to be listening to this on, on radio. Uh, it's an honor of mine today uh, to have uh, His Eminence, um, Soane Cardinal Mafi, uh, the Archbishop uh, for, Tonga Tapu, for Tonga and also New Way. Uh, Your Eminence, uh, Cardinal Mafi, it's an honor for me uh, that you have agreed for, for this interview. Thank you, Lala. It's also good to be here on air. Uh, thank you for allowing this opportunity to, uh, to be with you. The first question I have, uh, uh, Cardinal Mafi, is as a young adult, what was it? Uh, what was the calling? Was it a sign, a feeling, uh, something that was in you that, that said that priesthood was going to be your, 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 your life? I guess, Lala, what comes to mind to me right now is the, the background of my family. Mm -hmm. I think the whole setting at home, the, the, um, the environment where I was brought up, eh, mm -hmm. was very much uh, conducive to my calling. And it really convinced me it is my call. In other words, my home was just close to the presbytery. My home is just beside the, uh, the parish of Nukalofa. So, you know, everything in my childhood, you know, constantly going to church, especially and uh, family prayers at home, the rosary. I think all these, you know, um, really, really contribute to, uh, to that uh, inner voice, if you like. Eh? You know, when I was a child, I, uh, I admire a lot of uh, uh, figures like uh, priests around at the time. I, I love hearing their sermon, you know. So I think all this really, really inspired me. And of course, I went to school, uh, Catholic school, primary school in Sesemani at Fasi. You know, the nuns at the time, you know, everybody was so devoted. And, uh, and then I moved on to Abbey for Old College. Uh, of course, the, uh, the expatriates at the time, the priests from um, New Zealand especially. Uh, so I guess uh, all these, uh, as, a, as a young child, I remember I was so fascinated by uh, listening to the Word of God. And in fact, my, my parents, you know, uh, my father was a catechist there. Uh, he was a catechist and uh, of course, um, every day he will, he will uh, wake us up to uh, go to Mass. And, um, and I particularly love doing the reading at Mass, uh, especially when no one comes to do the reading. And my dad always, you know, he gave me the Bible and said, be ready. If, if the, the reader don't turn up, you're going. And I remember I was looking forward and I wish the reader won't come. Yeah, I, so it, it built up right early in my, my, my early years, eh? the love of the Word of God and listening to the priest. And of course, uh, when I came up to my teenage uh, level, uh, there was a little distraction there. Uh, in other words, the inner voice that I, that I was kind of uh, like a, almost like a fantasy world. I, I love being in the uh, church and so forth, uh, attending. Then, then distraction time came as a youth, so it's kind of tie out. But then it surfaced again. Mm. Yeah, so then that's when I proceeded, I pursued my, my, my call. The calling uh, Cardinal Mafi, uh, especially with our Catholic Church, I myself, um, is a very it comes from a very strong Catholic family. Uh, my father Joseph Ramanal, who, who who you know very well, is also friends with a lot of priests in the priesthood. Uh, this story uh, uh, is a story of of a priest that was a good friend of of my father, um, who who uh, I'm not I'm not sure in Cardinal Mafia you can uh, put it in into a more uh, a political correct way, uh, gave in to temptation um, and ended up getting married. Later on, the reason why I'm bringing this uh, uh, Cardinal Mafi is later on, my father ended up meeting this uh, said priest and asked the question, you were married to the church, because I, I, I truly believe that's the calling, it's for you to be married to the church and you can correct me, and then now you're actually married to a woman. What's the difference? The priest said, I wish I stayed with the church. There's a debate out there in the world right now. Should priests get married? 
Yeah, th thanks a lot. Uh, I'd like to begin with uh, when you mentioned your dad. Eh? Mm. Uh, of course, I remember, as I talked before about the importance of the, uh, the family environment, I recall your dad and, your, and his brother, Soane, and, and their parents. Mm. You know, coming to church, in Nukalofa Church, uh, even that inspired me early years, uh, to see a dedicated family. I remember Fifita and, and, and Ramanal. Uh, at, at, at church on Sundays, and, and Joe, your dad, was there, and so on. And, you know, they all come together, walk together at the church. It's very rare to see, the, uh, see that these days, you know, the scenario of uh, the parents and children walking together to church. Uh, um, you know, it's really, really uh, beautiful to see. So, and from then on, as you mentioned, we've been friends with uh, your dad, and, and, and particularly happy to, to, uh, to be on air in your, in your channel, in the radio, because I remember when your radio station was established, I remember your dad, Joe, used to come, hey, uh, Bishop, when are you going to come and speak in the, you know, because the, the radio is for the youth and so forth. And I kept saying to your, to your dad, yeah, yeah, one day, one day, but then it never happened. So I'm really, really happy uh, that, that finally I, I, I can come and, uh, and, and talk, and I hope maybe in the future. Well, come back to the, the, the issue, you know, to me personally, as long as you know what is your real call, I know they, to, to, to get married or not is, is um, there is an option nowadays, uh, but 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 the, ten, uh, the the debate and the discussion that in the church is ongoing, uh, whether the clergy would get married or not. But a lot of people, a lot of clergy, they, they still prefer their call. They're still happy with you know to be celibate. Yeah? So and on the other hand, and as I say, there seems to be in the the option of, of you know. Uh, you know, left the option to be uh, decided by the individual uh, priest whether to marry or not. Eh? But there, there's a lot of, of clergy, they still, stay. like myself, I'm, I'm very happy. It's a struggle, just like married couples or any other call. There is always challenge and, and, and struggle. But then we are all common in the one call to be holy, uh, you know, to, 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 to have this sense it's a vocation, it's a goal, whether you're married or celibate life or, or, or call to the, the clergy or religious life. As long as you are convinced this is your call and kind of, you know, have this consolation, this sense of, in the midst, even in the midst of the struggle and the challenges. Yeah? So coming back to my own call, I, there was a dilemma at one stage, you know, as I, as I, I was, uh, that was uh, like the big question, to get married or not, you know. I remember at one time it was so critical, you know, being a youth, you know, relationship with, you know, uh, with, with your peers and so forth. And, and the question or the issue was there, the married or not. And I pray hard, and I think this is a key, Lala, yeah. whether to get married or not, once that, that, that part of the equation is absent, like your relationship with God, being a friend of Jesus, to help you, to enlighten you, find which, which way, which call. That is the key. Then even whether you get married or be a religious, bring all this to the Lord. And because every call is supposed to be flow from Him, whether married or not. Eh? So anyway, so I'm quite happy at where I am now with the God to be just celibate, celibate priest and bishop. There's one thing Cardinal Murphy is to be called to priesthood and then to be called to be a cardinal of the Catholic Church. Talk about that moment that you were called to be cardinal of the Catholic Church. Well, obviously, there was a surprise to me. You know, I wasn't prepared for that. I mean, I never dreamt that, uh, uh, that call. You know, I, I was, was sufficient enough for me to be shocked by being called a bishop. You know, that was 2007. Yeah? I was in the seminary. I was teaching there, lecturing there. But, but then I took a little break, a sabbatical. I asked for it, not knowing that I, I would come home and uh, there was something else awaiting me. That was a shock to me. But then to call be a cardinal, that's even, uh, I won't forget that morning, I know. It was about four o'clock in the morning. It was, I got a call from the stage, my younger brother. You know, he got the news first than me. Mm -hmm. He saw it in the stage. You know, I think it was just EWTN or some channel in the stage. Uh, and, uh, and he got this text call from his parish priest. You know, it's a Filipino priest and calling, hey, Peter, it looks like your brother is, is uh, you know. And then when, when Peter, when Peter called me, you know, it was early in the morning. 
Yeah, it was so, so wet. What happened? I couldn't believe it. Uh, imagine it was four o'clock. I couldn't sleep. You know, so, so anyway, um, you know, it's hard to explain because of mixed feeling and all that. But uh, it somehow, somehow it was a humbling experience. And then I started recalling. I kind of looked back to, and I wondering, God, is this the way you you calling me? As, or being led to the slaughterhouse, in other words, yeah, to something deeper and deeper. So really, you know, in one sense, I was, oh, man, was, you know, it, it's a role that uh, it, it's going to be public and everybody, you know, that aspect of, you know, it will be in, um, among the, the, you know, it's a high ranking. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the responsibility, I said to myself, it's going to be a big role uh, by me, you know, can you, are you sure you're gonna? So, all this I brought it in, in the atmosphere, environment of prayer, of course. And I, it, that morning I'll never forget. So, I said, "My God, this is I don't know, you know, and, you know I'm still, uh, uh, you know, limited in so many ways in terms of knowing the church, uh, because knowing now we'll be a cardinal, we'll be in Rome, and then, oh my God!" But I tell you, Lala, at the end, the bottom line was it was a great learning to me. It widens my my knowledge of the church. And it calls me to widen my heart. Mm. It calls me further to the deep, eh? to be much more being friend with the Lord. Eh? To, in other words, all my beginning from the fantasy, little thinking as a, as a youth, you know, going to church and you know, always the older boy. Now it's widening, it's widening, deepening, deepening. In other words, to a, to a, a very intimate relationship with the Lord, you know, because this. This is it. This is the essence. It's not anything. Whether you're called to be a, a pope or whether or be a married married man, you know, whatever the vocation, because the vocation is the Lord's call. So the essence of any call is to be intimate with Jesus, to be a friend of His, very close. Then everything else will be fall into place you know, fittingly according to His will. Right now, uh, Cardinal Mafi, I want to talk about the reason why I asked for the interview, uh, and it's because of the many homilies that I w had the utmost honor to be able to watch and to be able to listen. Um, but before we get into the different homilies that I want to dissect, and I'm hoping that uh, you will allow me to, to, to do more programs in the future for us to dissect some of these uh, homilies, but what goes into a homily? You read the scripture. I, I, I notice, uh, Cardinal Muffy, you use experiences in your life. You use experiences around the world. Um, I know one of the homilies you use, Ukraine as an example. But what goes into, after you read the scripture, what goes into your thought of mind when you come up with these uh, homilies that, that's blessed us uh, every Sunday? Thank you, Lala. Uh, the, but that's a very important question, in, 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 you know, in, in, in regards to the, the harmony of the Word of God. Eh? To me, the Word, you have to be faithful with it, to really, really read and, and reflect on it. Eh? In other words, let the Word read you. But usually the approach is we read the Word. But let the Word read you, meaning you dwell with the Word for a long time and read it reflectively, because it's, it's different from, say, reading a newspaper or a piece of it. You know, uh, th this is a living word. It's supposed to be you being reflected when you read it. In other words, the word read you. When you read it slowly, reflectively, and prayerfully. Yeah? So I think that that is very, very important. It's a key. There's another element that you mentioned there is very important. I think that's what really touched people, is the, it's contextualized, it's relevant. Yeah? Uh, you know, it recalls, uh, there is a saying, I forgot who was this great man who, who came out with this saying, uh, was a preacher, as a well-known evangelist said, um, a good homilist is a person who has the Bible on his right hand and a newspaper on his left. Yeah? Mm -hmm. In other words, somebody who, 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 who's preached the word in, in, in relevance to what's going on, because this is what in the psyche of the people at, the, at currently. Yeah? What's the is when you preach, in other words, and you talk about something that is, um, it is you know, not a different world or different, yeah, from time to time you mention something from history, yeah? but as long as it's relevant, as long as it's uh, related to here and now. So I think there's a little skill there that perhaps, you know, when people say, oh, thank you because you touched us, because you mentioned here, 
because you pick something that is relevant. Otherwise, you like talking in the air. Mm. You like talking you know, the old concepts and just uh, theological principles. And, uh, and uh, you know, the normal people, the, the average people, Lala, is very, very important mm. because they are just, they were not uh, uh, well uh, studied, uh, you know, they fill their minds. It's just simple. When you give them concrete examples as, as in light of the word, it touches their heart. Mm. So that's when you, when you, when you the, the, the saying as it goes, uh, you engage with the people. Yeah? So even myself, I was just moved by my, you know, my own preparation. Because to me, the most moving part, uh, Lala, in, in preparing a sermon, it, it, it happened during that time, You're not on the, on, in the pulpit. Mm. Well, the pulpit is just the, 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 the but when you prepare, you know, walking with the word and let the word read you, it's, it's already a building up the spirit in you. And it is that spirit that you have to convey to the people. How can you preach and give the spirit to other people but you don't have it? Mm. That's why the preparation, you have to. And if a priest just come and prepare five minutes, you, of course you could just give a five minute. Uh, so that was very, very important. I like when you move to that question because uh, so many people just say, oh, thank you. I don't think I say, yeah, thank the Lord and give him the praise. He's the one, he's the spirit. Cardinal Murphy, right now we'll be talking about the different homilies that, that um, I wanted to mention. I, I've picked two uh, of, of, of uh, messages that you mentioned on, on your homily throughout Easter. Um, and I'm going to ask you that on, on the first one, I'm going to be talking about trust. I know uh, with the homily on trust, you you used and 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 the reason why um, a lot of the youth were able to 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 listen to it because you used uh, a, a a song that you heard on radio, "Suspicious Mind," and you used those lyrics to be able to explain trust. You know, thanks a lot. I, I like to begin with the, the, the point that I made uh, uh, earlier. You know, the the technique of you like the, the skill in, in giving a homily to attract your listeners as something that's relevant. When I thought of that song, because it really was two days before the, the homily was given, I was, you know, to me it was like providential, you know. I was praying and the Lord, how would I speak? How would I begin? And then I was driving one day. I was coming back from the cathedral. And that, you know, this program, I think it's your channel, right? Eh? You know, people just calling the announcer and said, oh, can you play this song? And I was, you know, I turned on the volume and it was this, this guy said, can you play this song by Elvis Presley and uh, Suspicious Mind? And then when I played, I said, oh, maybe this was going to be a grabbing beginning for the youth, this song, because he was talking about trust. Yeah? Anyway, that's why I mentioned in the homily. And I was, I was amazed that a lot of people that kind of responded to it. Anyway, the trust, that was my point. And the other, the other reason why I, I like to mention, of course, because it links to the resurrection and all the we have to believe our faith, but but I I did uh, uh, relate to the to this call for trust because of there's a message of Saint Faustina. You know, you probably heard of Saint Faustina. Uh, to me, is a great saint in our century. Uh, she was inspired, and her main message, of course, the core is Jesus. I trust in you because this is really the key that is missing in our world today. A trust. It's, it's like a hinge to our faith because only we have to have this trust, this, this faith in God through His Son, He rose from the dead. Because we didn't see that or witness that with our physical eyes. Thank God we have this thing called trust or faith. Yeah? Uh, I know it can be easily confused, Lala, with uh, to be naive. Yeah? No. The trust to me is has to be based on a certain confidence in, in God. Yeah? Because when you are confident in God, um, in His love and His goodness in you, there is no other thing. Uh, as when it comes to relationship, you, you see or relate to, to other people out there with that new lens of being loved, being convinced that I am loved. So it is very important, therefore, that this trust is not a being naive because, uh, you know, uh, then you will miss out on, on the reality, on the truth of the whole thing because you look at the person in being naive and he, and he or she just kept on 
on, on leaving the, the but because of the the new way you're looking it's also kind of radiate to the other person a change in him eh? or her so I think that's why I was grateful that I, I mentioned or talked about the, the, the trust uh, and it as it linked to the um, that uh, that's that him, uh, uh, not him. Well, it was not a him. It was just a, uh, a song eh? that that talks about what is happening every day in uh, daily living, uh, uh, especially with the relationship of husband and wife. When when this lack of trust kind of dwell a lot in their relationship, it will it will it will obstruct a lot of things, and it kind of drag on because the two of them is kind of. Uh, but if they re reform, they'll renew their lives with this special grace of the trust, of course, it will make a big difference in their relationship. The second uh, message on your homily, uh, you spoke on uh, you yourself were supposed to go and say a prayer uh, for someone. Uh, in, 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 in the process of you going to say a prayer, you, you for, 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 for some reason, you couldn't make it. Then you find out later that this person lost uh, their life. I, I, I tr this is something I've heard, and, 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 uh, and the reason why I'm asking about death is because about grief. Not so much death, but the grief. I, I, I heard somewhere that grief is the unexpressed love that you have for that someone. I, I lost my little sister when I in my 20s, and I lost my grandma last year. It doesn't matter how long you've known them, you're always going to have that grief because of that un unexpressed love. Even if you've known them all your life or you've just, it, it, that it was taken away from you in an early stage. When you console people, Cardinal Mafi, and in the consoling them, words comes out, it's like, oh, why God? Oh, why have this happened to my family? Oh, why is it me? What is the message that you give that helps um, the grief or the unexpressed love that you have for somebody that you've, that you've lost? Yeah, uh, grief is, uh, is really a, a deep uh, human feeling that, uh, that everyone sort of experiences different points in their lives. Eh? When, you, when you were talking there, I, I recall when I lost my mom. Eh? It took a while for me to, to, to really... And this is the experience that us priests experience a lot or we encounter a lot when we, when we are called to, to, to console people or to, or to share their, their grief. Eh? And I think that's why I, I mentioned that in my own experience with, um, you know, uh, when I'm asked or priests are asked to pray for, for people or individuals who lost their, their loved ones. Eh? And it, it takes a while, eh? it takes a while, but, but then when you make the effort of, of, of being there uh, and, and just be present and, and say a little prayer or, or take a little piece of scripture, you know, it's really, really consoling, it's really help to me, the grief is something that has to be unwind slowly. You know, as you said, you really rightly expressed there. It's like a love that uh, is not yet fully expressed. Eh? So when you encounter your fellow pilgrims on, on here on earth who go through in their lives this uh, experience of, uh, of loss of loved ones, uh, you, you, you actually, through your being there or through your being uh, uh, praying with him or her, you help the person with the power of the consoling words of God to unwind slowly, eh? because it's like a a, a, a little bond, eh? or a little uh, you know when you feel like internally, interiorly crooked, uh, you know, uh, so when you are uh, uh, consoled or, or being. Uh, express love by a uh, fellow companion. It helps the person to slowly. Eh? That's why, that's why uh, love takes time in a way. Healing takes time. You know, it has to be allowed at the time to, to be healed, eh? to be uh, slowly uh, loosened up. Uh, uh, 
And, and to me, Lala is a, is a big call these days. Eh? You know, in the gospel, Jesus lost a, a friend, uh, Lazarus, eh? in the, one of the gospels. And, and the two ladies, the, the, the two sisters, uh, Martha and Mary, they really, really uh, affected their lives. And, and they explained it to Jesus, if you were here, we won't go through this, this loss. Jesus really cried. You know, um, uh, it's one of the points in time uh, for Jesus that, that he really cried. So in other words, he was really affected by the, the loss of his friend Lazarus. Eh? So, but it, it took a little while, so Jesus just be together with the family, with Mary and Martha, they were together, sharing, and then of course he made the miracle, eh, raised him. But, but yeah, yeah, so that's one of the points in my home that I was talking about uh, a very deep human uh, feeling. Cardinal Murphy, um, your homilies and the message that comes out of your homilies helps uh, a lot of people in the Catholic Church. Um, one of the uh, stuff you mentioned was the sign of the cross. And I know there's a, a, a time when you weren't doing it because uh, out of respect for other religion. The question I have now is on religion. There's a lot of uh, 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 obstacles when it comes to religion where uh, some of these congregations don't feel that they want to listen to anyone else. For example, Catholic don't want to listen to anyone else but a priest when they are out there doing a sermon. The question that I have, everyone, all the ministries are all preaching the word of God, where does religion end uh, when it comes to listening to the word of Lord? Thank you, Rala. I think in the, in, the, uh, in this whole uh, context of uh, what you mentioned there, I, I, I will just dwell on the one element of, of religion or prayers is the, the ritual. Eh? Yeah. The ritual. Uh, for us Catholics, we, we use a lot of rituals, eh? um, uh, signs and symbols. Eh? Mm. And they're so powerful, so meaningful. Eh? Mm. But I think the danger or the uh, temptation when, when those rituals become just mere rituals. Eh? And that's, I think that's when religion is uh, sometimes it's not a word that we're like by, you know, uh, because it's often associated with just that's the, the external aspect of, of, the, of the church. So I think that's why I, 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 I dwell at one point of my homily on that. Like for example, the, the importance of the, the sign or the symbol of the cross. Eh? Because otherwise it would it will no wonder we will be kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, people will say, it's just empty religion. It's just skeleton. Eh? Mm. Look at the way. They, yeah. That's why to me it's very important for us to, to, to do it properly in a prayerful reflection, what it's supposed to be. You know, in other words, do it reflect, you know, as a sign of the cross. Like the night of the Easter vigil was this candle, and people walk solemnly with. When we do that prayerfully, it's not just a religion; it's a prayer. It's a real worship, you know. In other words, it's a sincere worship or, or, or relationship with your God, mm -hmm. rather than just uh, because there's a danger here, Lala, and, and sometimes we accuse of all. Oh, it's just like uh, they're playing magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what you call uh, there is a Tongan word called uh, follow a cow. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's very, very important that, our, especially for us Catholics, to bear that in mind, especially in the last few days where uh, our liturgy, our liturgical service, is filled with symbols and, and rituals. Eh? Yeah. Right. Because sometimes the people say, "Oh, uh, they, they, they uh, lot for they eh? yeah. You know, <laughs> no, it is the. But people have to explain, we have to explain to the people the meaning of these signs. Why we use the water, why the candle, and why the, the priest bow, why he, he, he prostrate on, the, on, on Good Friday. Right? Wow, it's a simple, I'm surrender. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross. So the priest or the bishop or the cardinal lie down on the. So all these signs and movements and action has a deep meaning. 
and it it all points to the depth of God, to His love. You know, He's infinite, and yet, uh, you know, uh, we are finite, but we use this example or signs and symbols to point to the infinite infinity of God. Eh? So uh, it was really it's something beautiful. I think, like for your audience, the youth. Eh? It's something that it has to be explained, the, the beauty of our liturgy, the beauty of our Catholic faith. Eh? Because they have to love it, but they have to be explained, they have to be well informed the meaning of this. Otherwise it just become like a source of like a, like a magic. The last question I have for you, Cardinal Muffy, it's the, probably the smallest question, but probably the one that uh, I, I, I've been uh, dreading and, and very nervous to ask, but um, I'm going to ask anyway. Can you have life without God? Well, Lala, it depends what you mean by life. <laughs> you know, it's a big word, yeah. Because, um, you know, Jesus, uh, for us Christ Christians, that I am the life and the truth and the, you know, and yeah. that's every. It, and, and that life, of course, it, it goes beyond this temporary life. Yeah? Uh, but of course, uh, you know, St. Teresa of Avila said, God is like the, the oxygen, you know. We breathe the oxygen. So without God, we mate. Yes, we, we end, we finish. It's as simple as that. You know, if we, if we don't have air, we mate, we die. So the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the risen Lord, that's what keeps us, you know, it is a saying, uh, Man doesn't live on bread alone, but the Word of God, His Spirit. Eh? So um, we need God. You know, I remember you know this great story of great uh, uh, John Paul II, the Pope. Eh? Uh, when uh, uh, there was a story when he first uh, traveled to to his homeland, uh, Poland, uh, it was way back in the late seventies, eh? and he gave that great sermon. Uh, you know, he probably moved by the spirit. And he was talking about the, uh, the, the, the crucifix of, of Jesus and, and the power of the cross. I think he was talking along on that line. And he imagined the thousands and thousands of people in the Victory Square. Eh? And, uh, and he kind of challenged his, uh, his people. Uh, in, in those days, you know, they were under communism, eh? the, uh, the uh, German. But then he challenged them. And in the midst of his homily, the people just uh, interrupted by saying, we need God, we need God, in Polish. We need God. You know, this is a cry from the secular world, the world filled with materialism, world filled with science, you know, with the, these are all blessings. But these are, you know, a cry from, they, they feel, in other words, they need something more. Mm. His life is all about a bread and butter, or all about money, is that, you know, you know as, as we imagine ourselves, people long for success. A success that's defined by materialism, by money, economics, that's fine. But at the end of the day, especially when we close our eyes to mate, is there something more? What then after that? That's what the, the whole celebration of resurrection is about. So real life is, it, it goes beyond after the last breath of our life here and now. It goes beyond to eternity. And who is eternity? God is eternity. And that's why we need faith in that eternity. He has conquered everything, conquered life, and he offered that life to us. So to me, Lala, there's a good uh, question to round it up our little yes, conversation. It. We need God, we need God. The reason for the question, Cardinal Mafi, because of the day and age now with technology there is questions from youth about this and and i and, and i wanted it to end uh with that I, I i i believe in everything that you've you've said i just wanted to be put out there and and i thank you for your time uh your your eminence um cardinal Muffy, uh and and i'm hoping I'll, I'll get more time with you so we can uh talk about more on homilies and 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 many more to come thank you Lyle.